Itmar has today joined the army, and from a garrison theatre somewhere in England, we say once more, it's that man again. Despite his meandering maneuverability, his strategical susceptibility, his infantile indefatigability, and his tendency towards tactical trepidity, he still remains. Colonel Hanley's just taking a course in camouflage and can't be seen. Colonel Hanley? What's your blinking war coming to? Th that, sir, is a military secret and cannot at the moment uh, be divulged. Ooh, oh, could, uh, Colonel Hanley. Colonel Doolally. Lummy, what a lark. <laughs> oh, gee. I guess that guy's got something. Ever since much fiddling farm was taken over by the troops, everything's gone haywire. <laughs> gee, this'll be the... This'll be the... Ball. Wakey, wakey, rise and shine. Hello, <laughs> oh, boys. Gee, boss, you're still in civvies. Didn't you get your commission? Commission? I didn't even get any orders. <laughs> they couldn't think what shower to put me in. <laughs> shower, boss? Sure. They wanted, first of all, to put me in the FFI. <laughs> what? What's FFI, boss? Well, turn around and I'll tell you. <laughs> but what are you now, boss? Sam, it's a military secret. I don't know whether I'm a band area or a highly paid help. There's a guy to see you, boss. Oh, was he very polite, Sam? Sure, boss. Uh, did he have a friend with him who kept on saying, go on, you ask him? <laughs> yeah, boss. It'll be a red cap. <laughs> but he, he's too small for that, boss. Then he must be a kneecap. <laughs> Well, I can't see him now, Sam. I'm expecting the M.O. at any moment. So go down to the quarter blokes and get me a pally ass. OK, boss. I wonder how I'm going to get the army off my estate. I know, I'll make a noise like a cookhouse slinger. Here you are, boss. <coughs> what have you got there, Sam? A pally ass. <laughs> A friendly donkey. You needn't have said that, I know. <laughs> yeah. He's a simple chap, Sam. He thinks a sergeant major takes orders from the bombardier. And, boss, yeah? there's a man outside in a long white coat and a hatchet in his hand. Ah, that'll be the M.O. Show him in, Sam. <laughs> Come on, son, let's have you. Let's have you. Fine medical officer you are. Don't you know what you should do before you come in here? No, mate, what should I do? You should cough. <laughs> now, look here, cough. I've got to give it a once over, see? Hop on one leg. All right. Here is sinews hopped by Tommy Handley. <laughs> All right, well, in response to your encore, I will present my famous ballet, Salute the Badger or See Me Dance the Polecat. <laughs> hey, half a mouth. I've got to listen to your chest first. Well, I've locked my chest and thrown away the key. <laughs> Say 99. 99. <laughs> What's that? You've got the wrong program. That's Eddie Cantor. <laughs> You'd better have an X-ray, mate. X-ray? No fear. Last time I had an X-ray, they found a bugler playing lights out. I'll never come back to me. <laughs> well, what shall I put you down as? Oh, put me down as gently as possible. <laughs> what a marvellous M.O. The other day he came in, put a cigar in my mouth and lit his thermometer. Excuse, please, mister. Oh, lummy. <laughs> It's Pyramid Pete with the off-white feet. <laughs> what do you want? Oh, mister, you give me permission to pedal on your parade ground? No, no. <laughs> oh, no. You'll have to see Shagga Brown about that. <laughs> oh, then, mister, I sell you blackout chevron. Very stripey, oh, crappy. <laughs> well, thank you. You haven't got a nice hat, not too fat. Oh, no, mister. I got what they wear. Very cocky, nice and darky. Well, have you any historical pictures for the officer's mess, like uh, Wellington at Paddington, or what's the matter with you? Oh, yes, mister. I got a lot more in army store. I got them. I go, I come back. You know... 
He's got a white tide mark round his neck. I'll make him a window cleaner in the glass house. Boss. What? Boss, something terrible's happened. Don't tell me you've seen a fatigue party working. <laughs> no, boss. What? Worse than that. You know your fish and chips that you left on the steps of the general's caravan? Don't say he's eaten them. No, boss. But the paper they were wrapped in has blown through the adjutant's window. Lummy. Well, we better get it back or I shall be charged with assault and vinegar. <laughs> oh, Sam, too late. He signed it. <laughs> well, uh... <laughs> Now I'll be sent to Ensor for 14 days CP. What CP, boss? Concert party, if I... Ah, Mr. N. Grenade. Oh. <laughs> With, uh, with all these soldiers, I'm completely demobilized. <laughs> Don't be so silly, so-so. You mean demoralized. Yes, but I've been called up. They want me to join the Royal Fusiliers. <laughs> you mean the Royal Ginger Beers? <laughs> yes, they want to make of me a sipper. A sipper? Is that a sapper at supper? <laughs> yes, yes, a sopa. I see. So if a sapper sips his supper, that makes him a super supper upper. <laughs> Have you had your medical? Oh, yes, Mr. Ankle Jerk. <laughs> Alas, they said there was a physical rock. <laughs> what, peppermint or Gibraltar? They examined me with a telescope. Oh, well, that was to see if your name went all the way through. <laughs> no, no, no. They said I had waiter on the knee. Oh, well, that's better than having jankers on the weekend. <laughs> I, I wanted to get a job on the stiff. On the stiff? <laughs> Doing what? Starting the quartermaster to keep him straight. <laughs> and now they want to put me in the canteen in the niffy. <laughs> well, that's better than being a tin can in the liffy. <laughs> well, so, so, I'll talk to the general about you. Mr. Endel Tank, as the French would say, au revoir. And as the Russians now say, oh, Dessa. <laughs> All right, Jack White. Yes, but I want you to know Tessie for a bottle. Certainly, certainly, Jack White. Yes, but you don't know that Tessie for a bottle. Okay, Jack White. Who's that, boss? Sam Brown. <laughs> Why? Why'd you call him Jack White? I'm colorblind. <laughs> well, if I'm going on night exercises, I'd better put on my pajamas and have friend tattooed on my chest with luminous paint. Hello, who's this coming out of the cow shed? She's in uniform, too. Good heavens, it's Poppy Poopa. She mustn't recognize me. Now, what can I use as a mustache? What about me? Oh, that's an idea. Thanks very much, Puss. I'll put your tail on my upper lip and she'll think I'm a staff officer. Ah, oh, there you are, Squire. I beg your pardon? Meow. Shut up, you. <laughs> I'm Brigadier Brandy Balls. <laughs> Stand at attention when you speak to me, girl. Oh, take off that cat. I know you. Meow. All right, cat, send the bill in to Tom. <laughs> Why have you been avoiding me lately, Squire? Well, uh, military duties, you know. I've been making invisible fags for hats to smoke in the street. <laughs> but you're not an officer. Shh, don't let them in. No, they think I am. <laughs> Tell me anything about the army. I come of an old military family. Ever heard of the Poopas of Pondicherry? No, but I know a few pars who are fond of sherry. <laughs> By the way, didn't you uh, didn't they use your father's nose for a torch in the black hole of Calcutta? <laughs> oh, how dare you! I'm a terrible kid, I'm sorry. But, uh, I'm of an old military stock, too. Really? Yes, my great grandfather on my mother's side was General Giblet, who fought at Grimey in 1844. <laughs> He married the daughter of Colonel Moore, who opened the early door of the Commodore Cornwall in 1894. Did he have any children? Children? What, Colonel Moore? Why, well, he had four. There was no more, any more, carry more, and forever more. I don't believe a word of it. Neither do I. <laughs> now, don't worry, Poppy. I've got to go and sharpen the Colonel's sword because he wants to cut a cheesecake at his daughter's wedding. So go and get yourself a nice cup of khaki water. And a buff bath bun. But when are we going to be married? When the wife gets a separation allowance. But you haven't got a wife. I know, but I must put something in my pay book. I couldn't take all the money myself. I take a poor view of you, Itmar. 
I'd like to take a good view of you, too. <laughs> a view of you, too? Certainly. Smile, please. Watch the birdie. <laughs> Thank you. Now you've done it. Now you, we'll have our pictures all over River Valley now. How are you going to get out of that, it, Ma? Oh, easy. I shall say they're pictures of Edgar Itma and his doll, Charlie McCooper. <laughs> hey, boss. Yes? Boss, news has just come through. We're going on night exercises this weekend. Oh, that's good, Sam. We'll get overtime money. <laughs> well, now, you uh, you better black out the white carrier pigeons and uh, go down go down to the stores and get me some screw-retaining, pin-retaining, bolt-retaining, now-remaining, self-propelling, fog-repelling, punctuating, insulating, actuating nuts. <laughs> What, uh, what for, boss? I'm going to feed the, to the zoo to feed the monkeys. <laughs> well, for cookhouse door. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm the one to run an army. I'll change my name to Carlo, then everyone can call me Monty. <laughs> Mr. Randley, Mr. Randley, Mr. Randley! Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Private Jones, 648519, stroke 79341 is on 48 hours leaving Surrey. He's walking down the lane with a weff on one arm and a wren on the other. What's he got on his head? A nap. A sign. <laughs> This is no way to conduct a war. I think I'd better interview my staff. Can I do you now, sir? Oh. There she is. Here she is, Mrs. Mott, the private enterprise. Oh, I love them, sir. Whether they're swatties or old sweat. <laughs> I know you do, you old camp follower. <laughs> if you're not swinging the leg, you're presenting arms. <laughs> I'm an old cantina, sir. Yeah, I've seen you blowing up the sausages with the bellows. <laughs> well, how are you getting on with your sergeant major, Mrs. M? Oh, he's as saucy as ever, sir. Oh? Why, only yesterday. He wanted to see me works tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Then he expected you to pass out, eh? <laughs> I repelled his invasion exercises. Oh? I... What did you do? Take off your gas mask? <laughs> I bet. I've got another follower now, sir. He's a gunner. Oh, is he? I bet you make him come out of his shell. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. He says I'm a wicked little barrage. <laughs> <laughs> then I suppose he sets fire to your tippet and does a pincer movement behind the smoke screen. <laughs> well, I wonder the Major hasn't made you his Batwoman. Batwoman, sir? I've always been a good woman. <laughs> Now, I mean, you know, take the place of his batman, manservant, look after him, fold his sleeping bag. No fear, sir. I believe in letting sleeping bags lie. <laughs> You're right. You're quite right. You never know what you'll find in them. But uh, surely you could polish his accoutrements. I'd like to see him ask me, sir. I'd go straight up to him and I'd... Quite, 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 quite. <laughs> Well, I hope you won't neglect me with all these other attractions about. Oh, no, sir. Oh. I've brought this for you. Oh, isn't that nice? What is it? It's a bombardier's blowout, sir. <laughs> well, looks more like one of Mum Barton's fish balls full of flack. TTFN. KATM. What's that, sir? Kit inspection tomorrow. <laughs> You know, I'll have to put her in charge of army comforts. They'll never take her in the ATS while she uses barbed wire to keep up her khaki issue. Ah, <laughs> oh, there you are, Tommy Wummy. Oh, hello, Aunt Sally. Well, they haven't knocked the clay pipe out of your mouth yet. <laughs> have you been entertaining the troops? No, oh, yes, dear boys. We've had such a lovely romp in the canteen. Oh, really? What did you play? Strip Ludo or Kit in the cookhouse? <laughs> No, I, I recited Shakespeare to them. Shakespeare? What did you give them? Much ado about Naffy. <laughs> or the taming of the stew. They closed their eyes in ecstasy and blew loud kisses at me. <laughs> they do that to me sometimes. <laughs> but I prefer strawberries. And then, to the more agile ones, I taught the maypole dance. You old rascal. Next thing you'll be turning a cartwheel in the sergeant's mess. <laughs> One dear boy was so amusing, he said he was a titterbug. Titterbug? <laughs> what did he do, run up the wall and laugh? <laughs> well, uh, did they dance long, Auntie? 
Oh, no, no, they have to go out for what they call their wallows. Oh, I see. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I think it's a kind of cocoa. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like it sometimes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I knew the time. Apparently, their favorite game is one I don't know. Uh, they call it square bashing. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, is it new? Well, not to me. I mean, uh, well, they've been at it for years, these fellows. <laughs> Tell me, how are you getting on with Mrs. Mop, Auntie? Oh, she's perfectly blizzard. Oh. Yes, she's promised me a little present next time I go into her kitchen. Well, I should make her taste it first. She saw arsenic and old lace last night. <laughs> What was it? She's promised to give me a fourthly one. Oh. <laughs> I'd keep away if I were you. I've just seen her dipping a rolling pin in custard. Well, I must cry, Tommy Bommy. I keep on promising to give a lecture to the dear commando. Oh, and well, what do they keep on saying? They've had it. <laughs> well, get off now, as your bucket woman says. What's that? Bucket woman? Oh, dear, Mrs. Mop. Uh, have you brought me my fourth new one? Yes, I have, and for two pins, I... Quite, 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 quite. All right, all right. <laughs> I'll see you later, Auntie. I'm just going to take Mrs. Mop's blood pressure. <laughs> I'm glad she's gone, sir. There's something I want to get off my chest. Is it? Oh, I know. It's that anthracite necklace you've got on. <laughs> no, sir. It's something I've been longing to tell you. But I'll never get you on your own. Oh, go on, tell me. Oh, I don't like to, sir. Oh, go on, sing it to me. Well, I will if you'll play for me. All right, only don't breathe down the back of my neck. I wish that I could hide inside this letter And seal me up and send me out to you What a surprising star They bring me to your door I pop right out and kiss you like you'd never been kissed before. We'd be so happy we could cry together. <laughs> and then we'd stop the way we used to do. I wish that I could hide inside this letter and seal me up and send me out to you. Oh, well, the old clear's gone, anyway. <laughs> You've been listening to Postal Packing Mopper singing Lick Up Them Stamps. <laughs> well, now we must get on with the Abka discussion. They're sending a speaker down from London. I hope his label hasn't come off. Of course. Yes? Of course, the guy's here from Abka Kidab. From the Abracadabra? <laughs> you mean the Abcar, Sam. The Army Bureau of Current Affairs. I like currents. I like affairs. <laughs> no, Sam, it's a sort of uh, discussion, you know. Are all the boys there? Sure, boys. Then i better go and face them. <laughs> oh, Sam, Sam, he started. Oh, not at all. No, I'm, I'm the uh, fake me time to uh, this year, uh, the Tinkerman Bob. I'm, uh, I've come down here to, I'm, uh, that is, I, I'm... Make up a god here, ya! <laughs> I said I'm here because I'm here because you're here because you're here. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, your uh, your officers have been briefed. Uh... Cut down. Yeah. Oh, I can't stand this, uh, gentlemen. Hello, officers. Now, quiet, please. Now, the subject of this uh, this <laughs> uh, how do you do? Uh, which will be led by our uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, Major? What's your name? Yes. Yes. That's your, no. <laughs> Oh, my, uh, my name. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yeah, that's easy. I'm, uh, I'm Major, Major... Major Trousers, too long. So... <laughs> no, 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 they, they, I, I, uh, Colonel, uh, Colonel, uh, she, she... Oh, I'll forget me on rank in a minute. <laughs> Get on with it. But, but uh, what's the, uh, the flitty with the subject? Oh, that, yes, yes. Well, I was going to speak about, uh, the B, uh, B... Uh... C? No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, B, uh, Bs. That's it, yes. How, how to keep the uh, bees? Bag them in the army! Yes. <laughs> the poor bees. Now, order, please. Now, as soon as uh, Major Fakematite has uh, addressed you on the... Uh, set pitch in, as soon as... Uh, what was the thing of me again? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, that's right, yes. Oh, the... Uh, what I was going to talk about? Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yeah, so that's... Uh, that's different. I... Uh, I got in my... my the... the uh, sir, how's the wife? Yesterday. <laughs> oh. You... Uh, 
You were going to talk about uh, uh, fleas. No, 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 no. Uh, bees, oh, bees, 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 yes. Uh, I'm going to make it ack, uh, ack. Bea, bea. What? <laughs> you mean uh, you brought, uh, you know, a thing that the bees live by? Uh, so, yes, you know, the high, the high. Uh... High, the high. Holy oh, oh, ho. Oh. No, no, no. No, this is a, this scheme is a very big, big Ben. Yeah, that's right, yes. yes. Oh, now where is uh, this uh, 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 big Ben? Oh, you, it's, it's just on, uh, just on... Uh... Nine o'clock? That's right. <laughs> You've been listening to Tommy Handley and Itmar with Horace Percival, Sidney Keith, Dorothy Summers, Dino Galvani, Bill Stevens, Gene Capra and Diana Morrison. The BBC Variety Orchestra conducted by Charles Shadwell, script by Ted Kavanagh, produced by Francis Wesley. <laughs>